Hi, everybody, and welcome to another fabulous episode of Thyroid Refresh TV. I'm Dana Bowman, co-founder of Thyroid Refresh. And I'm Jenny Mahar, also co-founder of Thyroid Refresh. And we're so happy to be here today with Adrian Klein, our resident nutritionist and also known as the Thyroid Whisperer. Welcome, Adrian. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. We're going to be talking with Adrian today about, um, you know, a number of things uh, testing wise, but hair tissue mineral analysis, HTMA is the acronym that we'll probably end up using a bit. Um, and Adrian has used this in extensively with her clients. And so we're going to, we're going to explore that with her today and talk about the ins and the outs, uh, how it can help you and what you need to know. This but is for, great. <laughs> yes. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about Adrienne. Of course, we know and love her. And if you follow Thyroid Refresh, you probably do too. But there is some other things that I want you to know. She's a certified transformational nutrition coach. Uh, but she's a Billy Joel fan, first and foremost. Because <laughs> yes, that out of the way. <laughs> As an autoimmune hypothyroid patient of 20 years herself, she's been through the blood, sweat, and tears that is autoimmune disease. Huh. Boy, we know that. After graduating from the Institute of Transformational Nutrition as a CTNC, and she's uh, certified in digestive health, weight loss, and autoimmune disease, she now works with thyroid patients to eliminate or decrease symptoms that persist even with medication, and she's fabulous. And she was featured uh, most recently uh, for us in Thyroid, um, excuse me, in First for Women magazine. Yeah. So Huge amazing. honor. Huge honor. So cool. It yeah. was such a great article. It was. I think the, the title was, I'm Finally Free from Tiredness. Mm -hmm. and it was great because it really focused on the connection between gluten and thyroid disease, which is not being talked about enough, in my opinion. And we, you know, we run into people every day who tell me, what, what should I do? What should I eat? Tell me what to do. And this is like the number one. This is the number one recommendation it is extremely common um, you know amongst all thyroid experts you got to look at gluten yeah. you want to talk about that a little just bit a, just for a second yeah. yeah i was going to say why why so much gluten um, if you yeah you explain yeah so the gluten um, you know it's it's a tricky little bugger and it likes to create what we call um, gut permeability and really just what that means is that the lining of our gut which is you know starts our mouth and ends at our backside that's the entire gut not just your stomach that the gluten um, actually has properties in it that you know kind of burrow their way through that lining that protect us from you know, food and toxins getting into our bloodstream. So when it goes in, it bashes open that lining, then food and toxins can get into our bloodstream. What happens then is that the immune system says, oh my gosh, there's an invader in, in the body. We have got to take care of it. So it'll send out antibodies to take care of it. However, it doesn't know what to do with these toxins and this food that it's, you know, essentially floating around in your blood system and your body will then create antibodies against an organ that you have. That's what causes autoimmune disease. For us, that we have the autoimmune form of hypothyroidism called Hashimoto's, for us, the body creates antibodies that attack the thyroid. So your thyroid is constantly under attack as long as you have these antibodies that are active. And those antibodies will always be active when there's gluten in your diet because it is permeating that gut lining. And there's a lot of similarity too, isn't there, between the gluten molecule and thyroid tissue, right? Yeah. So it's really common that that's the one that you end up with, the autoimmune that you end up with, because mm -hmm. they are so close looking together. Mm-hmm. So the body gets c confused. confused. Right. Very confused. We call it going rogue. They see it, like, ah, I don't know. And they do something else. So yeah. So I think that gluten is not talked about enough in connection with thyroid disease. I think it often gets brushed off as a fad 
Uh, I'm here to say that it is not a fad for thyroid patients and that it's something that they should definitely be considering. Um, if we can quote Isabella Wentz, she said that upwards of 80% of thyroid patients report feeling better when they go gluten-free. 80%. That's a lot. Well, and we're just coming off of our first Thyroid 30 wellness adventure, and the three of us all had teams before we hopped on camera today. We were just talking about this. There's All of us had some incredibly powerful testimonials come from our team members who eliminated gluten, many of them for the first time ever. They finally had the support of Thyroid 30 to do that successfully, and miracle stories. I mean, we hear them every day. And, you know, Adrian, you kind of have your own miracle story with eliminating gluten from your diet and reclaiming your health. Yes. Um, and I didn't know that that was something that would help my thyroid health. It was just me. I was seeking out answers and I really wanted there to be an answer, you know, in diet because at this point I was so sick and nothing was helping me this was kind of my last ditch effort. And my new naturopathic doctor at the time said, well, yeah, you need to eliminate gluten. Like it was the one thing I've been missing my whole life that no one told me to do. Um, so when I did and I felt amazing and it made my antibodies um, go down from like 700 and something down to 200 and something just within, you know, six weeks of going gluten free. So that's when I became a believer that it's not a fad, that it is something that needs to be seriously talked about. Definitely. Absolutely. Yes. I know it's definitely been a factor for me and Dana too. It's, um, you know, it's not the only recommendation, but mm -hmm. it is, you know, that number one recommendation. And really quickly, before we dive into the hair tissue mineral analysis, um, since we're so lucky to have you on the air with us today, can you quickly answer the number one question we get from people? Help, I'm newly diagnosed with a thyroid issue. Tell me what to eat. <laughs> I know that is like <laughs> such a loaded question, but can you give your, I'm sure you have a, a response to that because we get that so much. I have a, a private Facebook group that's just called Thyroid Support Group. And when there's new people that come on, their number one thing is I've gained X amount of pounds in X amount of time. I was just diagnosed. What do I eat? And I love they ask that because that means that they're saying there's more to this than just taking a pill every single day, right? There's more to I it. I get it. Yeah, they get that, that what they put into their body is going to have an effect on how they feel. And that has a direct correlation to how their thyroid is working. So um, I do start out with the don'ts. You know, you should eliminate gluten. Like if we're going to do a blanket statement, no bio individual, you know, we don't know. Just a blanket statement of what the average thyroid patient can do. They can eliminate gluten. They can eliminate dairy. Please, please, please eliminate soy. And soy is in everything. So it, it actually takes more diligence to eliminate soy than it does gluten. You'll find that eliminating gluten, once you get it down, it's super easy. But And dairy too. But that soy, boy, it likes to be in everything. Uh, especially if you go out to eat too. So that's something to keep into consideration. But when it comes to eating things that support the thyroid, it's all those nutrient-dense foods. I Leafy greens, you couldn't do any better if you just ate leafy greens every single day and like in my group we did a salad challenge and that was to eat one salad every day for seven days because I don't think people normally do that and there's sure. a lot of nutrients just in a salad and um, if you can make that your lunch every day your thyroid's going to be happy there's tons of nutrients in there um, that help the body work and that help the thyroid work um, you know and I say eat organic always. I know there's the dirty dozen and the clean 15, but you sh really should be eating organic all the time. We're just finding that these toxins, for us to have a toxin load inside of our bodies, we just can't function very well. You, your body isn't working well. So to clean out those pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, glyphosate, you know, that is something that you have to be committed to doing. So I tell people organic and grass-fed beef when possible, and um, also pastured chicken, 
turkey, naturally raised pork, uh, eggs, those kinds of things. Stay away from packages, stay away from processed foods, but you can get an amazing diet just from fresh, organic, grass-fed or pasture-raised food. Perfect. And if, if people are looking for more detailed information, I think Adrian has a really incredible offering through the Thyroid Whisperer. Um, can you talk about that a little bit where people can get like a thyroid specific meal plan from you? I do. If you go to my website, it's thyroidwhisperer.com. I have several packages. Um, one package is um, the kind of the more affordable one, and that's um, the AIP package. There's no testing involved. It's just us talking. We get an hour of talking, and then I build a personalized um, AIP nutrition plan based on our conversation. And then the other packages that I have involve testing. So one of the testing is the hair testing, the hair analysis that we'll be talking about. And then that includes, you know, nutrition plan, our consultations. And then the other one is genetic testing. So, and then there's another one that you do both genetic and hair, which I find the most exciting when people do, because then you get to compare the two. And it's amazing how well they correlate with each other. Um, it really just speaks to the efficacy of both testing. So those kind of go like into deeper and deeper levels with people of getting really specific about what foods are right for them and which ones aren't. I think is that bio, accurate? Yeah, we're all so different. And I know I say this a lot, but we're walking, talking ecosystems. So what works for me is not going to work for you. It just isn't. And what works, you know, for Bob down the street isn't going to work for Steve in Florida. It just, we're so different and we're products of our childhood. We're products of, um, you know, our mother's health while she was pregnant with us. We're products of our current environment. We're products of past traumas. So everything is going to react very differently to food. So if I eat a piece of pizza, my body is going to act very differently from your body when it eats a piece of pizza. So what I love to do is this testing, and this testing tells me exactly what's going on with you. Um, the hair analysis tells me exactly what's going on with you right now. And we can zero in, laser focus, and get that squared away. And that becomes our focus with your nutrition, potentially supplements, depending on how your nutritional elements look, like your potassium, your calcium, and your zinc. Um, so that is why I prefer testing versus blindly saying, hey, go gluten-free, because then you're missing something. And the hair analysis gives us so much information. It just, I, it's hard to work without it because it's like a light bulb in mm -hmm. a dark room. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I remember when we first started working together, you were like, I'm so excited about this because I just had it done and I've... I implemented the, you know, the things I learned from you did from your own hair tissue mineral analysis and it really helped you. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that it existed. I went through school, uh, became a certified nutritionist and went off and running and still dealing with my own um, thyroid issues. And actually my thyroid issue was all my thyroid tests looked normal except for my THH TSH was sky high. It was like in the 60s. Mm. And, Holy uh, moly. and I felt hypothyroid. I mean, I really did. So that's when my own naturopathic doctor said, hey, why don't you do this hair analysis and then work with the nutritionist we have on staff? Um, and I said, yes, I should do that because if I'm going to be a nutritionist, I need to work with a nutritionist, right? Uh -huh. Walk the walk, talk the talk. And um, she came in and we did the hair analysis and it blew my mind. I, I couldn't believe um, where my nutritional elements were at. I couldn't believe that my list of foods to not eat included things that I ate every day, like broccoli cooked, obviously, broccoli and um, avocado oil and coconut oil, um, chocolate, uh, rutabagas. Like I've never had a, well, I've never had a rutabaga in my life, but that showed up on my list. But that blew my mind because it said I was eating foods that my body was not tolerating. And it was also foods that would be part of an AIP plan, just one of those blanket plans. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. coconut oil. Of course, broccoli, as long as it's cooked. Of course, right. this. Of course, that. Um, that my list was full of don't eat that. 
because you're not processing it well. Okay. Well, the great thing about the, the training that I had, because the nutritionist there, she didn't actually give me like a nutrition plan. She just said, here's your report and these are the foods you don't eat and here's some foods you can eat some more of. That She was done, which was great. I was fine with that because I went home and I said, okay, I'm going to make an entire nutrition plan out of this. And 30 days later, um, when I went back in for my follow-up, she took one look at me and she said, you look amazing. You're glowing. You're happy. You, this is just 30 days in. And I was like, I feel so much better. I can't believe it. Just these tweaks in my nutrition plan. Easy as pie for me, it was because I was ready to feel better. Mm -hmm. And when they pulled my test, uh, my TSH again, it was like one point something very normal. Wow. Just by changing my nutrition, it was mind blowing. And so that's when I said, oh my gosh, I have to do this. this. Yeah. I have to learn more and I have to do this. And yes. So now that's, that's what I do. Wow. So how does it work? So powerful. Tell us about the process. So the process is actually really easy. Um, so you go on my website and you click the buy button and, and you've made the commitment to, to work with me. And then um, what I'll do is send out the hair kit to you. And it's, I have lots of instructions. There's written instructions. There's YouTube videos. So there's, it's really easy. The one thing is, that I always say is it's always more hair than you think it's going to be. <laughs> I've had people send me like literally one strand of hair, <laughs> but it needs to be more. But what you do is you just kind of do it all over your head and you lift your hair up and you're just going to like, just maybe cut, let's see here, like that much, like this, like just tiny, right? Mm-hmm. So you're cutting it there and you do that like three or four times all around the head. And once your hair gets back down, you don't even know that, that you did it. And then I provide the envelope. You put it in the envelope. You just fill out this little part on a form. You don't have to fill out the full form. I do that for you. And you just mail it to me. And then from there, I mail it to the lab. And it takes about two weeks for results to come in. And it's super exciting on the day when I wake up and it's there in my email because it means that I can start building your plan. And um, from there, then we hop on video and we just go over it all. Wow. It's easy. Yeah. Wow. And I would tell you, I've never had somebody get their results back and say, oh, that's not interesting, or I already knew that, or I wasted my money. No, it's always shocking moments. Shocking. Wow. After and people implement the, the, the dietary recommendations. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also, I bet it's interesting to see the things that you don't expect, like cadmium or lead or whatever to be in your system, right? Right. Or most of the time I see with thyroid patients, I'll see like your magnesium and your calcium are uh, tanked, meaning they're like super low, right? That's normal for us thyroid patients. We have to work really hard to maintain our magnesium and calcium and potassium. We just do because our bodies don't process it very well. Hmm. But then you get that one thyroid patient who calcium and magnesium is off the charts. And you think like, gosh, what does that mean? Um, But then when you do some research, you find out, well, there's a couple of reasons. It it usually just means your body isn't utilizing calcium um, very well. So it's just storing in your tissue. It doesn't mean you're eating more calcium. It doesn't mean that you're taking calcium supplements. It means your body's not using calcium well. And usually that means that there is a level of adrenal fatigue going on. Interesting, Uh, right? Now you can tell that just by your nutritional elements of what Mm -hmm. exactly is going on in your body. And that's what I like to say is the hair analysis gives us a story of what's been going on in your body for the last three months. All right. And after six months of doing the program, you'll want to get retested because you don't want to keep doing the same thing because then you're starting out here, right? And we're working towards homeostasis here. So if you maintain what you're doing forever, then you might end up over here. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you're staying in this area. Well, because things change, things change, Mm -hmm. you know, um, the seasons change, you move across country, Uh, You know, you move to another country, whatever it is, you know, and um, it it all plays a role. Your environment, what you eat, where you live, 
Exactly. So things just change. We never stay the same, right? Exactly. Yep. Ecosystem. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. curious about you now. Like, are you still not eating broccoli and have those things stayed the same for you or was it a temporary? So thing? what I tell people is just give me 30 days. Mm -hmm. And after 30 days, because we'll meet again, we'll evaluate where you're at and where you want to go. And for me, those 30 days were about healing the gut. And whenever you're decreasing inflammation that way, you're going to heal your gut as long as you're not eating those foods that are going to cause the gut permeability. And you get, after three weeks, you get a whole new set of epithelial cells, which line the gut, right? So after three weeks, you have brand new insides. And after 30 days, you can say, hey, I've really missed broccoli. So what you can do is add in the broccoli. Well, for me, it was for the wine. But let's just say it was broccoli for a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> and add in your broccoli, your one serving. And you just want to make sure that you don't eat it with other food. You wait two hours, have your broccoli, wait two hours, and then you wait three days. And you really got to check in with how you're feeling. If you're bloated, if you're fatigued or anything, that means that you're having a reaction. And it's hard for a lot of people to understand that what they're feeling after they eat food might actually be a food sensitivity or an allergic reaction because it happens differently for everyone. You know, some people, you know, their throat closes up and... You know, they get and, hives and, everywhere. And people take that for granted. So many yeah. people I know, they, in other words, they, they eat and they go, oh, well, I need to unbutton my, my pants because my, you know. Exactly. It's just part of it. That's what, when it's I eat part of eating. this, yeah. it's just part of eating. And you're like, yeah. no, it's not really necessarily part of eating. It shouldn't be. No. You know? It's not normal. <laughs> yeah. Right? But, but we all think it is because that's just how we don't remember it being any different. Mm-hmm. So I don't think this conversation will be complete without talking about accuracy, right? Yeah. Like there is some debate about this, like food yeah. sensitivity testing. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel it's more accurate than the, the blood test, food sensitivity testing? Do you feel HTMA is accurate? You know, and, and if so, why do you think there's so much debate about it? Sorry, that's like three questions. Once, but. <laughs> I'll start. I'll start with the one I know feel comfortable with first, which is: okay. um, Is it accurate? It's absolutely accurate in that it will give you metabolic type. It will tell you where your nutritional elements are at. So you've got that's your calcium, magnesium, potassium, zinc, um, cobalt, all those kinds of things. It's accurate there. It's accurate with your toxic levels. You have, mm -hmm. you know, mercury or aluminum or cadmium, um, which loves to hang out in the kidneys. Um, it's very accurate when it comes to, um, you know, reading based on your metabolic type and based on your nutritional elements, whether or not you may be experiencing some adrenal fatigue. Um, it's very accurate in saying that based on your metabolic type and your nutritional elements, we think that you are reacting to these foods and it'll give you a set of foods um, that you are potentially reacting to. And those are the foods that you want to eliminate during the program. Doesn't mean you can't ever bring them back, but it just means following that protocol that I talked about earlier, right? Wait three days, then you can try another one. Um, so, I mean, yes, I do eat broccoli, but I probably eat broccoli twice a month. Because I just know that my body doesn't handle it overly well, but I still love broccoli. Right. So, um, so there's place for these foods in your life, potentially, after you've eliminated them for at least 30 days. You can bring them back in. Right. See where you're at. Um, it's, it's accurate in that way. Now, compare that to a blood test that is testing for very specific foods. It's going to be different. Could they work well together? Oh, yeah, they could, totally. You know, you get both of them. You're feeling adventurous. And it'll be really interesting to see that list that comes from your hair analysis and compare that to your blood list, blood test list of foods that you're reacting to. Mm -hmm. So they're different tests. They give different answers, but they both give great answers. All right. Okay. And do you feel that that's maybe part of the reason why in the conventional medical community there's, like, some – debate about it is that you know there's the overlap there's maybe some gray area it's not necessarily as black and white 
as other tests. And I would also add to that, the familiarity is not there for most right. conventional um, doctors. They're it's not, not a test. Yeah, it's not a test that they, you know, order usually or, you know, interpret. Um, there is, there's a lot of companies that will do this hair testing. I've chosen the company that I go with for several reasons. One, because of the way that they have created these um, standards of practice that how they handle the hair and how they test the hair. There's different ways to do it. And I did do my research prior to choosing a company to um, essentially partner with in my business that I needed it to be as scientifically proven as possible um, and handled in the way that I read to be the best way to do hair analysis. I also needed to have a doctor at the lab who, who would interpret these lab results for me and give them to me in a report because I'm in the state of Oregon. I cannot, I can order lab tests all day long. I can't interpret them. So I need that interpretation so that we can move forward. And then I do my own interpretation of the doctor's interpretation to build you that nutrition plan. So I think that it's important that you know what lab you're going with. Um, and again, I just think that, that conventional doctors, they're not familiar with it. So they're, they're going to say, well, I'm not familiar with it. So I don't, I don't know anything about it. I don't want to know anything about it or, you know, whatever they might say, but this test is accurate to show what your body has been doing in the last three months. And I think that that's incredible information that if people want to, they can have. And from there, you can make decisions on how to live your lifestyle and eat the food that you eat. And here you have a whole, you know, it's science right in front of you. It's fascinating. Um, so you're making decisions based on that. Uh, I always encourage my clients to take their hair analysis report, which can be anywhere from four pages to I've had ones that were like 20 pages long, to their doctor. And not to say anything other than I had this done, this is the information that was given to me. And I also encourage them to take my written out plan for them. So they, the doctor has, it's full transparency. The doctor knows exactly what this, their patient is doing with a nutritionist. Um, and they can either be on board or not, but um, when you're eating healthier for your own body, how could that be a bad thing? Well, and I think it's important to know, too, that a conventional MD has very little nutritional training. It's not a big mm -hmm. part of med school. And that's where it can be so important and empowering and really increase your likelihood of making successful recovery by working with a, a nutritionist, especially, you know, someone with an integrative holistic approach like you have, you know, and I know. I mean, we're here to, we want people to know about all the options that are out there. I'm yes. super curious. Mm -hmm. I've had food sensitivity testing done and, you know, there were some really um, specific foods and then there were major food groups. And I get it that, you know, when I read these articles by MD saying food sensitivity testing, pooey, you know, but it helped me it changed my life. I was having a major, major digestive stomach issues that they were not able to diagnose no. after invasive testing and diagnostic, you know, things, they were unable to diagnose me. And it turned out to be a, an egg intolerance. That was not obvious. It wasn't like I ate eggs and I got sick. There was yeah. no immediate reaction mm -hmm. and I can eat eggs. I just can't eat a lot of them. You have a bucket. Yeah. I ha yeah, it's like, and it's been so incredibly empowering because my son has the same thing oh, no. and it's very hard to make those correlations. Yeah. And I don't think I would have done that without food sensitivity testing. So I think, you know, I'm gr very glad to have that, have had that done. And I think, you know, this is like, it's right. It's in the same boat, you know? Yeah. So yeah, and you know, I, it's your hair. It's your hair. It's, you know, this is what comes out, right? I mean, this is this is how long you know, it's been on your hair. The court systems use hair analysis to show or to prove if um, someone is taking drugs. 
the guard relies on it to give them incredibly accurate information to make a decision on whether or not this person gets to go out in the real world or they need to stay behind bars. They're using this test for that, right? Mm -hmm. So to say it's inaccurate is saying that we're not doing our job in the justice system, which I realize is not the soapbox we're on, but what it is, um, no matter the length of your hair, your cells, which carry all the information in the world, your cells hold on to this information and they actually grow out with your hair out of the hair follicle and they harden like concrete around your hair shaft. And that's where the information is getting, you know, so you cut off your hair. We don't care about the end stuff. We only care about what's really close to your scalp. And that's what goes through the process of the lab. They only want that first quarter inch of hair because that's where the hardened cells are at. And that's what's going to give them the most accurate and recent information. Well, and if you're making dietary changes, you know, why not give yourself some really tools? So the tools you need to make that the most productive time it can be because it's not easy to be on a, an elimination diet. And we're mm -hmm. very grateful for, as you said, you know, a blanket uh, program like the autoimmune protocol, which has helped many, many people yes. Yes. heal their gut. And, it, you know, for people who are working with very limited funds and things like that, you know, it's, it's really nice to be able to look at something like that and say, this can help you. But to take that to a bio-individual level, yeah. I mean, it just makes sense that you're going to increase your chances of succeeding and having some really incredible results from that as you did and as so many of your clients have. I mean, you just take, for, for example, the one client that I had that had the magnesium and the calcium off the charts right? Had she never done the testing, she would never know that she's in, you know, the midst of adrenal fatigue. And the only reason we knew that was because her calcium and magnesium were off the charts based on her hair analysis. Wow. So the thing is that would have gone untreated, unrecognized by this individual, you know, for however long, you know, maybe till it got really bad, you know, like I think Dana, you deal a lot with, you know, adrenal stuff mm -hmm. and had you caught it at the mid level huh. instead of like the pit level, right. You'd be in a different spot today. So I would yes, say like, would be. you know, it's accurate information, but how is it wrong to ever just have enough info? I mean, just get enough information. If you can get more information, it's like learning, right? Yeah. Learning, learning about learning. your body, right? Yeah. Just get yes. more, as much information as you can get, then you're just better off, even if you do nothing with it. And I've actually had clients do that because for whatever reason, they said like, oh, okay, great. I just wanted the results. I don't want to do anything with it. All right. If you do nothing with it, here you have this something and you already know it. You can't unknow it. Right. You already know you're in adrenal fatigue. You can't And in five that. years, you can go back and go, hey, look, <laughs> five years ago I was, you know, mm -hmm. mid level adrenal fatigue. Now I'm at the pit. <laughs> yeah. I don't ever want to be at the pit. That's no. bad. No, it's, <laughs> it's hard. Not no. So well, I just so say the more information, the better. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so much of this process of being on, you know, the lifelong healing path that so many of us are on as thyroid patients is kind of being your own guinea pig. And, and it's something else that you can try. I'm in. It's on it. This is on my wish list for sure. I would love to <laughs> explore this and um, I will send you a me kit. Too. Me too. I'll send you a kit. <laughs> me too. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there are some things I did want to bring up that can cause, um, you know, for this, the test to be a little skewed. And um, really, there's just the two things, which is um, if you swim a lot, like in swimming pools, you know, there's a lot of chemicals in the, the water that can strip those cells from your hair so that okay. they don't get an accurate reading. And the other thing, too, is using um, like a dander shampoo, those medicated dander shampoos, like... Um, head and shoulders. So, um, okay. you know, that can change your, the cells on your hair, hair shaft too. Um, so, but they also say they don't want color treated hair, but here's the thing. They only want the hair that's closest to the scalp. So I always tell my ladies, you know, before you go get your hair colored, you probably have at least, you know, a half inch of grow out. Am I right ladies? Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That you get your, that you do more than that sometimes. <laughs> I know. Oh, it depends yeah. on your life, right? <laughs> right. Um, you know, and then, then you just, you clip your hair, um, you know, right before, before you, you go. go get it treated again or okay. color, whatever. Yeah. All people right. Do. And you can, I also have clients that like take the whole kit to their hair person and the hair piss person will do the cutting for you. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's something that you can do too. So okay. basically swimming and, and, you know, medicated shampoos can skew the results. If you do swim a lot, then, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe stop swimming for a couple months. You just need that hair to grow out that has the cells on it. Okay. Good to or, know. Or swim in the lake or something. <laughs> there you right. go. Yeah. Or, or, <laughs> Yeah, or or or, like, I don't know. <laughs> river? Ocean? I would say like I we're by the Columbia River. No <laughs> one swims in the Columbia River, so <laughs> I don't know where you're gonna swim. But um, maybe if you have your own pool and it's not treated. But yeah, Adrian, this has been fascinating. Truly, truly fascinating. Thank you're- you. I find it fascinating as well. I kind of nerd out over. <laughs> Well, it's great to know about all the different options that are out there. And um, thank you so much for being here with us and sharing with us about hair tissue mineral analysis and um, a lot of other great, you know, nutritional information for thyroid patients. And thank you for being on the Thyroid Refresh team. We're so blessed to have you and we just love you. We do. I'm blessed to have you and I love you and I just love you guys so much. And I love everything that you're doing out in the world for thyroid patients. It's amazing. Everyone needs to sign up for Thyroid Refresh. If you don't, you're missing out. You really (laughs) are. There's It's incredible to be on this shared mission together. It is. It is. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. And thank everybody for joining us on another great episode of Thyroid Refresh TV. See you next time. Bye. 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 Thank you.